Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about Apache Kafka, which is a open source streaming service, which you can integrate it with your Hadoop ecosystem. So, so far we have discussed all about data processing in Hadoop and some different data processing tools like Hive, Apache Spark, Pig and many other services. And we have also seen some NoSQL databases which are being very popular right now for its low latency and high availability. But we have discussed all about the data which is already stored in Hadoop. So you have ran Hive queries on the data which was stored in Hadoop, but we haven't discussed about how to get that data into Hadoop in the first place. So your data might be sitting on some other relational database or you have the data in the CSV files or if you have to ingest data from the web logs or so many other services. So there are two ways to ingest the data into your Hadoop ecosystem or you can say SDFS, which is a storage layer of Hadoop. The first one is a batch mode where you ingest the data on a specific time by running the batch job or else you can ingest the data in the real time and Apache Kafka will help you with the same. So you may ask what really is Apache Kafka? So Kafka is nothing but an event streaming platform which is used for collecting, processing, storing and integrating the data at scales. So it is used for building real-time data pipelines with a very scalable architecture which is suitable for big data applications. So it was originally created for handle real-time data feeds at LinkedIn and it was introduced in the year of 2011. So you may know about LinkedIn which is a professional network and generates petabytes of data each year. So every big organization which deals with big data face this issue for its real-time data analytics and Apache Kafka solve it by introducing the streaming service and as a result many of the fortune 400 companies are using Kafka. So in order to make complete sense of what Kafka does we have to first understand what is a event streaming platform and how it works. So before getting into more detail about Kafka architecture and its core components let's discuss what is a event. So this will help you explain how Kafka store these events and how to get events out of the system and analyze those event stream. So event is nothing but a type of incident or a change that is recorded by application. So for example, it could be a transaction or a website click or a temperature reading coming from a temperature sensors. So event is nothing but a combination of notification and this event will be in the key value pair. So before jumping into the architecture, let's discuss where it is used actually. So now let's discuss about where it is used. So the first one is it is used for continuously capturing and analyzing the sensor data from IoT devices. So the best example would be the Tesla car. So I hope you already know the Tesla autopilot runs on numerous sensors which are attached to capture all the data related to the traffic or road signs to control the vehicle. So the data which is recorded by these sensors should be streamed and processed in real time to take some immediate action on time because it should be very very reliable otherwise it will create an issue and may result in hazardous situations. The next one is it is used for processing payments and financial transactions all in real time. So it could be used in stock exchanges, banks as well as insurance firms etc. And it is also used for collecting immediate react to customer interaction and orders. So if you see in many of the e-commerce websites, there will be a chatbot which will give you the answer all in real time based on your inquiries. It is also used in the healthcare industry for monitoring patients and predict some changes in condition to, to provide the timely treatment and in case of any emergencies. So it is also used for tracking and monitoring cars trucks and shipments data all in real time such as in logistics or in automotive industries. So these are some use cases of Kafka and how it is used for providing a better service. So now let's discuss how it works under the hood by discussing all about this architectural components. So now let's discuss about the architecture of Kafka. So Kafka made up of several components like producer, consumers, topic, brokers and zookeepers and all these components work together to provide as a streaming service. So now let's discuss them one by one. So as you can see in this figure, 
you can see the producers which produces the stream of data and publishes it to the Kafka topic which is present in the Kafka cluster and as you can see the connector which is used for connecting the external DBMS to your Kafka cluster as well as the stream processor so if your data coming from logs is very sparse and not in the format that you expected then you can use the stream processor to process that data as per the application and consumer used to consume that data. So first of all producer is used for publishing the message on one or more Kafka topics. So producer may get the data from any RDBMS or any CSV file or JSON files or could get the web logs from a specific websites and it could be sensor data as we have discussed in the previous slide. So we will write a producer application which produces a stream of data and publishes it on one or several topics. So topics are nothing but the tables in a relational database. So a bunch of messages which belongs to a particular category is known as topic and the actual data is stored in this topic. So in addition we can replicate the topic which nothing but copies the data for high reliability and also we can partition the topics. So partitioning is you already aware that divide that data into several parts and we have also used this strategy in Hio as well as HDFS. So this partitioning and replication will increase the fault tolerance and scalability of Kafka architecture. So the next one is consumer. So consumer takes one or more topics and consumes the message which are already published through extracting the data from brokers. So we need to write a consumer app to consume that data which is already published on that on the specific topics for further processing. So either you could use that data for further analytics purpose or you can write that data on HDFS which we are going to do in our next lecture. And also then we have the broker. So these brokers are basically system which maintains the published data. So a single broker can have a zero or more partitions per topic. And we also need the zookeeper. So zookeeper you already know the concept. So it helps to provide the metadata regarding the processes which are running on the system and also grants the health checking and leadership election. So if you want to know more about zookeeper, I'll recommend you to watch our previous lectures dedicated to the zookeeper. So these components will work together to use as a streaming service all in the real time. So you may ask what really is the need of Kafka? So Kafka is very capable of handling millions of data and messages per second. So because of this capability, it is a good choice if you are dealing with huge amounts of data. So it also works as a mediator between source system and the target system. So which means the source system which is nothing but a producer which sends the data to Apache Kafka and, and where it decouples that data and the target system which is nothing but consumer consumes that data from the Kafka and it is very highly performant. So it has a pretty low latency value which is less than 10 milliseconds and it proves a well-versed software. And because of these reasons, organizations like Netflix, Uber, Walmart and over thousands of firms make use of Kafka for their real-time analytics. And the Kafka architecture is fairly fault tolerant as well. So it means that sometimes a consumer successfully consumes the message or sometimes it fails. And if consumer fails to process that message due to backend failure, it reprocesses the data which will increase its fault tolerance and reliability. So in this lecture we have seen what is Kafka, where it is used and we have discussed about its architecture and its main components and how it works under the hood and also why it is used. So in the next lecture let's get our hand dirty where we will set up the Kafka, Kafka cluster on our SDP sandbox and ingest some real time data in our Hadoop cluster. So if you have any doubts let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this lecture please hit subscribe and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.